Netstorm Islands at War is what you get when a game developer goes on a bender after deciding to make an RTS game, only to come up with some of the wackiest and most unique concepts in a strategy game for its time. Netstorm was released in 1997 by Titanic Entertainment as their debut title. The company had been founded a year earlier by some industry vets looking to make a name for themselves. Unfortunately, the studio wholly lived up to their name and sunk shortly after the launch thanks to Netstorm's cataclysmic commercial performance and inability to find any sort of foothold in the RTS community. I couldn't find the actual time Titanic closed its doors, only that the servers were officially shuttered in May 2002 by Activision. If you have a source with the answer, do let me know. Despite its commercial failure, the game reviewed well, scoring solid 7s and 8s across the board. It was even nominated by CNET as a contender for their Online Game of the Year award, but that ended up going to Ultima Online. Which is painfully ironic, since the founders of Titanic Entertainment had come from Origin Systems, creators of Origin Online. But as I said, Netstorm's sales numbers were bad, really bad, only selling a bit over 10,000 units within two years of its release. And apparently I was one of those lucky few buyers, as I still have my original Netstorm jewel case from when mum and dad bought it for me when I was a kid. This was obviously before the days of digital distribution, so I imagine they must have printed like 100,000 of these discs, only to have most of them just never sell. Did they end up in a landfill somewhere? Are you sitting on 90,000 Netstorm cases with manuals and discs still sealed? Can I come buy a pallet off you, like I'm some third world dictator buying three dozen T-54s from a depot yard? I'm willing to pay, just call my people. The poor sales were down to a few factors, the first being that Netstorm was positioned as an online game where you'd play with and against your friends using a dial-up internet connection. The issue was that online gaming was about as undercooked as a hastily ordered filet of fish from McDonald's in 1997. Yeah. Doom and Quake were sowing the seeds of what the future of gaming would become, but it would take a little while after Netstorm for real-time strategy to become a genuine player in the online space with series like Age of Empires and Command and & Conquer. Oh, its failure also might have had something to do with the fact that the free demo for Netstorm that came out a couple of months before launch could be converted into the full version of the game for no cost, with just a little hack. Whoops. Netstorm also suffered by launching in a very stacked window for strategy, just two months after Total Annihilation and one month after Age of Empires, among others. And it also fell victim to pretty easy to do hacking exploits that made what little multiplayer community it had get fed up pretty quickly. Unfortunately for its creators, Netstorm never got close to making the impact they would have hoped for, but now it's abandonware and anyone can play it, even if the multiplayer is a little difficult to get going. And by little difficult, I mean really difficult. But hey, they're still single player. So then, with that being said, should you play Netstorm today? Let's find out. As its title suggests, Netstorm Islands at War says you take command of warring factions on island masses across its world of Nimbus. Except these aren't regular islands, no these are floating islands. Finally we know where James Cameron got his inspiration for Avatar. Didn't realise you were a Netstorm enjoyer Jim. The factions worship elemental gods of the storm, so that's sun, wind, rain and thunder. And these are channeled by each faction which defines their build options and style. Though there is some crossover between each element, depending on if you can build their workshops or not. The visual style of Netstorm is certainly eye-catching. Floating islands, serpent cannons, huge temples, whatever these are, and burning priests is not something 7 year old me would have expected to see in an RTS game after being used to historical titles like Age of Empires and Stronghold, but here it is. The building designs and models are legitimately really cool, some of these look sick. I think the 2D design is really on point here and when comparing it to modern remakes and fan recreations in like the Unreal Engine, there's just something about the translation to 3D that just didn't quite work. Same with the sound design, let me tell you the sound guys knew what they were doing with this game because man everything sounds awesome. The effects have so much character that they stick with you. Like any Netstorm enjoyer would instantly recognise the terrifying scowl of the thunder cannon 
or the incredibly satisfying clicking of a sun cannon, turning into position to obliterate anything in its path. Oh, and the priests. Here's a story. Me and a friend used to play this game together back in the day, like I'm talking over 20 years ago when we both barely had started school. And the way the priest delivers his voice lines when performing his ritual is still, to this day, an ongoing meme that we reference from time to time because of our love for it back then. We just thought it was so cool. For the wind. For the sun. For the rain. For the thunder. For the storm. It is done. And the screams of the guy getting burned alive. Damn, the whole building blows up. Ah. Can I say that you'll have these same moments without your own prior experience? No, probably not. But nostalgia aside, I do think the sound and visual design are Netstorm's strongest aspects. And honestly, I reckon it's worth the download to live through them yourself. Netstorm's gameplay concepts are without a doubt very simple. But it's thanks to some unique mechanics, as well as some puzzle-like elements that keep it surprisingly fresh and exciting. Even for me, someone who played this game to death back in the day. The three campaigns available all offer some unique scenarios that range from quite easy to actually pretty hard, especially if you're not used to the game. The game isn't really about your destination because it's always the same. Like a puzzle game, it's all about how you get there that matters. Each game sees you starting with a priest, an ambassador of the elements as it were whose only job is to stay alive, maybe gather some resources, and finally sacrifice the enemy priest to the fickle gods that you aim to please. The grunt work of your faction is carried out by faction unique transports who collect Netstorm's single resource, Storm Crystals, which are used to build structures and develop the limited technologies available. You may have noticed that these finite resource wells, called Storm Geysers, are offshore, as it were, so to get there you need to build bridges. Bridges are an interesting mechanic for a few reasons. Firstly, they're free, you can build as many as you like, and each time you pull one from the menu it's replaced with a new piece. If a bridge is left out in the air and incomplete, it'll soon collapse, but once they're secured with a building or further expansion, they'll solidify it and they're impossible to remove, unless adjacent buildings are exploded that is. Bridges act as platforms for your various turrets and generators to project power offshore. There are some bigger buildings that are core to your faction, but they need to be built on the limited land you have available, so everything else gets precariously placed in the clouds. One of the big reasons Netstorm often feels like a puzzle game is because of how the various offensive and defensive structures work. Each has a requirement of how many generators it needs in range to power it, and each will have some sort of unique mechanic or function that keeps it different from everything else. Because there are no default weapons here, everything is its own thing. Take cannons for instance, the sun cannon can switch between firing between all four cardinal directions, which provides great utility, but its power level is just okay and its range isn't infinite. But a thunder cannon however, it's a lot more powerful and the range is longer too, but it can only fire in the direction that it was built in, so it's pretty vulnerable from every direction except that one. There's a variety of other ones too, like omnidirectional but short range disc throwers, flying transports, and gyrocopter bombing platforms that have a huge range but are entirely defenseless. Oh, and big squid guys. The Netstorm campaign is what we could say thrown together. While it doesn't feel cheap when you're playing it, there are moments that make you realise that this is certainly not the primary focus of the game. It's kind of like World in Conflict, like you can tell that this is a multiplayer game first, single player second, though to that game's credit the single player campaign was pretty good with some real effort behind it. But in Netstorm, the campaign is more like a series of scenarios tied together with some very flimsy narrative beats delivered through text pop-ups. There is a surprising amount of lore to be found in the game's information entries, hinting at a deeper story that perhaps the developers wanted to tell if given the chance. Or maybe the creative team were just bored one day and decided to add some words into their funny elemental RTS game, who knows. Each scenario always gives you the same goal of sacrificing the enemy priest, and usually there's some sort of gimmick or unique challenge for the mission. 
This one requires you to go around an army of thunder cannons. Since their firepower will outgun anything that you can create with your limited space and resources. Netstorm demo enjoyers like me back in the day should remember this one fondly as it was the final demo mission available that would hint about the offerings of the full game. And like I said, some of these are surprisingly challenging and the puzzles they end up becoming are pretty satisfying to overcome once you figure out the gimmick or way you're meant to get around it. And it's even better if you can get around it in a more unconventional way. And sure, sometimes you'll be pulling your hair out because a mission seems impossible, but just take it again and try a different method. You'll get it this time, I'm sure of it. I'll admit that there's not a lot of reasons to go back and play Netstorm today. It doesn't have the wide nostalgia factor that other games of the era do, due to the fact that basically no one actually played it, despite it reviewing well at the time, and having grand ambitions of being this big online experience. Still though, it's an interesting product of its time and does offer some unique mechanics that haven't really been replicated. There have been a couple of fan attempts at reviving Netstorm, or a Netstorm-like experience, the most promising being Stratus Battle for the Sky. Unfortunately, that launched into early access a few years back and has since stopped receiving updates and is now dead in the water, though Steam reviews are pretty rough. All we're left with now is the original, for better or worse. Thankfully, installing it on a modern system is pretty easy, though you might need to finesse some compatibility options and launch commands to get it running optimally, and you'll probably need a virtual CD drive. As mentioned, it's considered abandonware, so there's a link in the description if you'd like to get it yourself. At the very least, if you've never played it and are looking for something classic, unique, and ahead of its time, Netstorm will certainly provide you with at least a couple of hours of old school, pixelated RTS fun. Are you one of the elite few who played Netstorm back in the day? Do you own the elusive Netstorm jewel case like I do? Let me know in the comments because I'd love to hear if there's more like me out there. And thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to support me, then consider becoming a patron or YouTube member. You'll join legends like Ero, Krizzy218, Jack, Nutty Jawa, Overlord Jeebus, T Edits, Crispy Rubber Chicken, XV204, Benjamin, David, Cynical Cheetah, Sebastian, Dakayo, David Wintendo, Bad Ghosts, Sean, Grey Spirit 4, Peter, Tim, George, Nedas, and my paladins, Johnny Wolf, Strateger, and Eric. Thanks very much, guys. And thank you again very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.